Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will look at binary regression trees. The material in this uh, video are inspired by uh, the textbook Elements of Statistical Learning by Tip Shirani. So, binary trees try to solve the regression problem by dividing your input feature space recursively into regions and assigning a constant value to the output if the input features fall into that particular region. Okay. So, let us consider this example where we have a continuous response y and an input vector x with two dimensions. In this case, we will we'll refer to them as x1 and x2 and of course, the task is to predict y given test inputs x1 and x2. Let us assume that you are given a training data and of course, we will see how binary recursive binary splitting of input feature space. Um, gives you the desired results. Okay. So, let us start with the feature space x1, x2, there are two dimensions, right. So, we recursively split by choosing a threshold along x1, so we will call that t1. Okay. So, now uh, once we choose this threshold t1, we see that the input feature space is now divided into two regions, one to the left of the blue line and one to the right. And we can do a further split. So, we take the region on the left and we can do a further split by choosing a threshold along x2 call that t2 right and we go to the right again here where we split this again by take data by um, considering a threshold t3 along x1 of course, then we look at again once once we choose t3 then this region is split into 2. So, we, we choose the region on the right and then once again we can split this region into 2 by choosing another threshold T4. Okay. So, we get about if we go we will get R1, R2, 3, R4 and R5. Right. So, what I have not specified so far is how do we determine when to stop. Right. So, how far do we go, how, do, how, far, how often do we keep splitting. So, every time we land up with two regions after each split and we and each of those regions we split further into two and we can keep doing that till a specified point or till a specified criteria is met. Okay. Now, once we have these regions, how do we determine the output right? for new test data. So, how will we, um, so uh, what do you mean by how do we determine the output, let us say we have test data some x1, x2, some value is given, I am going to put a tilde there so that one can choose. So, if x1 tilde and x2 tilde fall in region x r1, right? you can plot that. So, this is x1 tilde and this is your region r1 into which it falls, then if that then how do you determine what y would be. Okay? So, that is what we are going to look at now. So, that is this is the model which determines y. So, what this formula says is that you consider the region in which x1 and x2 fall into. Okay. So, it be, let us say it belongs to region 5, right. Here i is an indicator function. So, it returns true for uh, the uh, region into which x1 and x2 falls into. And what it says is you just assign a constant value c m c of m. So, let us say c of phi and that constant value is returned as the output. So, that will be the same output for all x 1 x 2 that fall into that particular region even the test data as well as the training data. Okay. So, let us see how we can fit this into a tree like structure so that it becomes more obvious. So, we start with all the data points. So, we have capital N data points let us say and we will consider the first threshold at the top node here. So, each of these circles is a node. So, we consider with the top node let us say x 1 less than or equal to t 1. So, this is the threshold t 1 here okay. and it splits into 2 like we saw in the previous slide and on the left hand side we will look at x 2 less than or equal to t 2. So, that will become t 2 giving rise to r 1 and r 2. I might have to reverse things here. 
So, this will be R 1 R 2 right. Okay. So, we take the region on the right hand side. So, x 1 greater than T 1. So, that region we split again into 2 by considering x 1 less than or equal to T 3. So, we will get R 3 here which corresponds to this region. Okay. And on this part, so that give you two, two regions one to the left of T 3, one to the right of T 3 and the right region we are once again split by considering x 2 less than or equal to T 4. So, this is a T 4. Okay. So, so, this will be R 4 and R 5. So, we have to be consistent with how we, uh, if it is less, if, yes, if this is true then it is R 1, if it is greater than then it is R 2 which is correct. So, that is the order in which um, we have divided the input feature space into regions. So, now we see how we can uh, fit this recursive splitting into a binary tree. So, uh, next step is to see what, how to actually grow this tree. So, what do you mean by uh, growing this tree is? determining how we choose these features to split. So, in this case I just chose to split with x 1 in the beginning, but what is to stop you from uh, using x 2 let us say. Okay. So, how do you determine which feature to choose and what the, and in fact the threshold also this t 1 how do you split based on t 1 what is why is t 1 so special. The second problem to solve of course, is to figure out what this c m r in this case we have C subscript CM, I just said or some constants that we assign to any input features that land in that particular region R m. So, how do we determine C m and how do we determine the number of partitions? Okay. So, that is the uh, problem that the tree growing algorithm solves. Okay. So, to grow a regression tree, um, we will consider this problem where we have n data points x i y i. Uh, the notation here is slightly differs from the previous slides just to make it simpler. So, but in this case we have to consider the full problem. So, we have n data points x i y i with each x i being p dimensional. What I mean is that, so you have y i is the output corresponding to input x i, but each of the x i are p dimensional in the sense. So, let us say uh, x 1, so y 1 is the output corresponding to x 1 and x 1 itself is p dimensional in the sense x 1 1 x 1 2 so on and so forth up to x 1 p. Okay. So, the input vector is p dimensional. So, in the previous case we are looking at two dimensions right. So, here it is p dimensional more general case. So, the tree growing algorithm determines the split variable which of these should be split. So, is it x 1 i 1 to or if you write this down x i 1 x i 2 up to x i p right. So, we have to determine which of these features we have to choose is it 1, 2 or p or the pth feature or uh, and what is the split point itself for in that feature how in this case uh, to put it in the context of the previous slide what should be the value of the t's that we used as thresholds right. So, the basic model is is to model the response that is the output wise as a constant in each region. So, we determine which region x falls into and we have a constant which describes the output in that region we assign that as the output. Okay. And if we actually formulate this as a least squares problem let us say the number of in the sense that if we know the number of partitions beforehand. So, if we know the number of partitions beforehand then we can provide the least squares problem as So, this is let us say we will call this um, L. So, we this is L squared is what we is the is your cost function right. So, I just went too far across so I will have to write it down here. So, let me rewrite it at the bottom. So, we are looking at basically y i minus f of x 
squared right here f of x is given by this formula okay so here if we know the number of partitions m right so if we we have we know the we know that we are going to split the input region into m and we actually know what the m regions are then the ci's the cm's are easily determined by opt, uh, by solving this optimization problem now if you take the um, derivative with with respect to the unknowns in this case cm then we easily shown that cm's are nothing but the average value of the ya in each of the regions okay so we know the output corresponding to every xi that falls in a particular region rm and so in the training data so we they take a mean of those points that will be the output assigned okay so if we know the number of partitions beforehand then and if we post this as a least squares problem then the response at each of the partitions is nothing but the average of the response of the training data falling into the particular region okay so that's the uh, that uh, <coughs> that's the solution but now the 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 problem is that we actually uh, determining the number of partitions beforehand is computationally very difficult problem to solve because you can see that there are so many combinations that are possible as a number of as to the number of regions in order to optimize this particular least squares cost function so a greedy strategy is adopted so what is uh, how is it solved so what we do is we we start off by solving uh, the test where the recursive binary splitting comes into play so we choose a particular feature and we determine the best split on that feature so the best split point for that feature okay and what feature we choose and what is the best split point is determined by solving the this optimization problem okay so for the sake of clarity let's say we have we have chosen uh, feature j and the split point is s so if it's a continuous variable you can think of s as a threshold like we had in the previous slides t1 t2 t3 and t4 okay so j is your feature feature index and s is your uh, split point or threshold for that particular feature so if we split your entire data space based on that particular feature then we will get two splits two uh, two regions r1 and r2 okay and so then we can write down the uh, the quad loss function for the optimization problem so it has uh, the inner and outer optimization loops so the outer one is the one that determines the best j and the best s for that particular j if you look at the inner um, uh, optimization it's actually trying to figure out what c1 and c2 are so in the sense that so we have at every node in the tree that we saw earlier we have all the data the input uh, training data and we we decide that there are only going to be two partitions and what we have to estimate now is that what is the best feature and what is the best split point for that partition right by optimizing this loss function that's all we need to do and it turns out that c1 and c2 like we saw earlier is nothing but the average of the points that fall or average outcome of the points that fall in that region and here is the average again outcome of the po points that fall into r2 so that's the uh, solution for the particular split okay so turns out by, by we can determine j since this problem is easily solved the inner loop is easily solved we can scan through all the features and find out the best split point and the lowest cost function for the split point and we choose the one which gives you the least cost cost function so once we split at a particular node then we are left with two other two regions and then we uh, adopt the same procedure we go to each one of the regions and then split them again into two okay so the question next question is how where do we stop splitting can we just keep going on um typically the way it's done is you uh, there is no the, the splitting criteria is not very well the stopping criteria is not very well defined so it, usually the tree is grown to predefined depth and then there is procedure procedure called uh, pruning which helps to um, bring down the depth of the tree um, it's easy to see that as you increase the depth of the tree then it's easy to overfit right because you can always split your input space into smaller and smaller regions so your training data will be fit perfectly of course your test data there will be a lot of error in your response so in the other next videos we will look at how binary trees are used for 
um, classification problems. Thank you.